Hey guys, pretty early for me, it's about 7 in the evening. Um, my life has been shaken up a little bit. <laughs> um, oh, and I, yeah, I just woke up about an hour ago, had my breakfast, and uh, recently I have had a uh, um, an adjustment in my life. Um, I had a choice due to the uh, staffing at my job of either commuting a long friggin way <laughs> in the daytime in traffic and spend, spending an extra hour of my life every day commuting uh, in that horrible friggin traffic Seattle traffic really does suck <laughs> but uh, or I could Switch to graveyard, and oh man, I just uh, uh, I'm gonna have to do it. It pays more, that's something. But uh, as a uh, graveyard person, if you guys, if any of you are graveyard, uh, I have some recommendations. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, I bought some plywood. Um, it's like uh, really that's not, not very thick plywood, but and I cut it out and I created this uh, big this big light block thing over my window, and then threw some clothes over the places where uh, <laughs> where uh, light normally goes through, and I'm thinking about putting a little insulation uh, weather stripping around the top of my door because the light comes through there too. When you are sleeping in the day, light is your enemy, and your your brain can like reset, uh, and you will be awake. Like if you have to get up in the middle of your night at about noon, <laughs> and then go out, and as soon as you, as soon as I step out the outside that bedroom door, boom, the light just blasts you, man. And um, so what I've did was I purchased some soldering goggles. <laughs> mm, see if I can get these on here. Put these puppies on <laughs> and it's always night. <laughs> so I can basically uh, uh, I just throw them on and then go take a leak or whatever and then uh, come back in here and it doesn't screw up my uh, biological clock and then I can lay right back down again shut the lamp off take the goggles off and go back to sleep and I, and I shit you not it really helps a friggin lot <laughs> so uh, so basically I'm in a situation now where I single guy you know MIG toes are the best people uh, we have the most options as far as working overtime you know I mean working nights and I had to add it up, man. An extra hour on the road, and paying fuel, paying the car, wearing out my car, <laughs> and uh, and then basically uh, doing that every single day. That's like five hours a, a week, uh, man. That's money we're talking about. This is that's money that I would not be able to. I mean, it would be energy and vitality sucked out of my life, and then then it would just be gone and it, and you don't get any money for it <laughs> and you're actually paying more and I earn less so uh, best thing for me to do is just maybe for the rest of uh, maybe I can switch back to day shift depending on the staffing <laughs> uh, maybe I can uh, do that before the winter so um, so in any case 
uh, here I am on graveyard and it's <clears throat> I tell you it helps me lose weight because I just come home from work and I'm so friggin tired <laughs> that I just slam down onto the to the bed and I'm I'm out and uh, and then I end up not eating a meal before I go to bed which is that's a very good way to, to do it so I can be a, I can have a generous breakfast and have a lot of energy for the day and um, earn more uh, during the day and then it takes me only like 15 minutes to commute every day instead of 90 minutes <laughs> and um, so all in all my life becomes more efficient the only downside is uh, if I want to do any outside work in the yard, uh, I get home at about 7.30ish and uh, and I can't be firing up the wood chipper that early, <laughs> but I could do it at maybe 8.30ish or 9 and then I can, and most of my gardening and outside projects doesn't really, it's not really that loud anyway. So um, this will do for now. But uh, I was, the main purpose of this uh, video is uh, I just had a question from a guy who was asking me for financial advice <laughs> and I had to put a disclaimer in there saying, I'm a diesel mechanic, not a financial advisor. Uh, please don't sue my ass if, you're <laughs> if this advice goes bad, right? So um, basically uh, he was asking, uh, you know, what kind of investments he would he should get into in this economy and uh, and basically I had a few ideas but uh, I don't really know where he's coming from his name is uh, is uh, Halvaman 3 anyway he uh, gave me that question earlier so I'm gonna actually uh, give him a video response as well as a a physical or text-based response. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's see. Oh, by the way, <laughs> another benefit uh, of graveyard for me is I have a very low tolerance for really hot weather, and it is summertime, and it was like 90 the other day, and I was like, oh, man, it was brutal. And uh, fired up my $100 air conditioner, <laughs> And then I can sleep like a baby all day, and uh, and the light with the light blocking, man, I am freaking, I'm sleeping just awesome. Um, so, oh, but back to this. Um, he was asking about uh, what he should invest in, or what some investment ideas would be for uh, the fact that oil is running dry or getting lower, but. Um, for me, uh, basically our society is sort of adapting as the oil level sort of drops, um, and what we're but we're still can in a sort of a boom and bust cycle, uh, financial cycle. It's like every eight years or so, you have another big financial bust, right? Uh, most re second most recent was of course the two thousand. Uh, the dot-com collapse uh, and they had like massive real estate massive everything and then the whole thing just circled the drain and uh, then everybody was freaking out about Y2K <laughs> one guy had a party going on Y2K and then at midnight he shut the power off at the breaker <laughs> that would that would have been an awesome joke <laughs> well anyway he um, basically um, uh, oh yeah, and then of course we had another big boom, you know, everybody was like, oh, real estate. Uh, when I was living in the condo, uh, pay, calmly paying extra on my mortgage every, every month. So anyway, uh, as the, uh, during the big real estate run-up of, of uh, 2005, 2006, uh, Everybody was saying, Benjamin, you've got to get out of that condo. You're going to lose your chance to buy a house. You're going to be in the condo forever. And I just said, no way, man. 
the, these real estate prices cannot be sustainable because our incomes are not going up and and the uh, and the prices of houses are just going up and up like insanity and this is something that just cannot be sustained so I was just saying nope no thanks <laughs> enjoy your house you know and then uh, back in then in 2008 2009 uh, uh, everybody everybody was like massively underwater and people were losing their homes and uh, and then I uh, and I kept saving and I in 2010 I paid off the condo and, and all that time I was uh, during the big boom uh, actually no right around 2006 I started buying precious metals they were about uh, 12 to 14 dollars an ounce and uh, then I kept buying precious metals and uh, kept uh, kept paying extra on the condo and uh, and then in 2010 I paid the condo off and then kept slamming all of my extra money into uh, precious metals and uh, then in basically around <clears throat> 2000, early 2012 I believe uh, I was shopping for a house because I mean the real estate prices sure looked like they were hitting bottom and uh, so I just I started cautiously shopping and then I found went, went to various places and then I ended up fought, finding this place and you know, and put in an offer for it and then then I cashed in some precious metals and they were like 30 something dollars an ounce at the time and uh, and basically uh, used that as my down payment. So then, um, then now, and then the cycle reversed, right? Then uh, the stock market started going up in, around 2012-ish, uh, and the precious metals were continuing to drop and drop and drop as people were fleeing precious metals and buying things like real estate and uh, and. Uh, the stock market right and now we're in a situation where the stock market is very high and precious metals are at their bottom they're like 20 bucks an ounce uh, last time I checked um, so basically we're at the those certain assets are one one asset is low while the other is high right so if you're in a situation right now and you if you're especially if you're a young guy like in your 20s or something now is the time to be not really buying real estate because it's kind of high and for goodness sake I sure as heck wouldn't buy anything in the stock market that's just insanity at this point the stock market's at its high and it's being inflated with massive printed freaking bank money it's just crazy dude there's no value in there for a real working man if you happen to be able to create money out of nothing in the banking system, then I'm sure that, uh, that the stock market would be a good investment because that's money and value that you get for nothing. So, uh, but neither you or I are in that situation. We have to bust our friggin' ass for our money. So, uh, so basically, I would not put anything into the stock market at this point. And I would simply go precious metals or bitcoins. <laughs> now I know I'm always harping on bitcoins, have been for much of the year, but man, it looks like those things are about to explode on the market. But um, if I were just starting out or if I was in my 20s or so, I would probably go 50-50 bitcoins, 50% precious metals. I would stay away from real estate, stay away from the stock market, and then in about maybe one or two years, uh, the stock market's going to tank again, and the uh, real estate is going to start becoming more and more bank owned, and banks don't want real estate. <laughs> uh, they want people paying their mortgages, and uh, basically the property values will crash and precious metals because people will be fearful oops uh, pardon me 
uh, ran out of system memory there. <laughs> I had to switch to the SD card. Okay, back to what I was saying. Um, when you get to be an old fuck like me, <laughs> after a while you start to pick up a few things. You know, when you're a young guy, a lot of these cycles of the economy are just like, they're almost invisible. You know, you don't really understand them. And a lot of the financial markets, you know, you're not going to, you're certainly not going to learn anything useful from CNBC. So uh, what I would do, okay, but basically it's taken a while even for a non-financial guy to, like me for to get this beat into my head. But the, our whole economy goes into cycles of boom and bust every eight years or so. And when that occurs... Uh, um, certain investments are more valuable than others, right? Um, in the bust cycle where everybody's panicking and freaking out and uh, people are losing their homes and their jobs, the best thing to do is not to buy precious metals, even though there's like ads for it all over the place during times like that. Uh, the best thing to do is to be buying things that are low. You know, if you're going to buy a house and if you have the means, the time to do it is during the panics. Um, and if you are buying, and if in, during the boom period, which right now we're in a financial boom for the bankers and the banking industry and all that, uh, so money is in the stock market big time and it's driving the price up and you don't want to be competing with that. <laughs> uh, so the best thing for you to do is to be putting money into things like uh, uh, b things that are not uh, in demand, like uh, precious metals, for example. And if I, and of course, we're in a situation right now where something is just exploding on the market, and that is, of course, bitcoins. But that is more of a speculation than an investment, because you invest in things that have innate value and Sure, the the network of of bitcoins, the ability to send money to somebody in Bolivia with on, with only an eight cent transaction fee, you know that's pretty darn cool, <clears throat> and it has value. Uh, but there's a chance it's not a sure thing like precious metals. Precious metals are almost a guaranteed way to uh, to put money and value away for the future, but. Uh, the upside on bitcoins is vastly higher. I mean, I have bitcoins, but I'm going, I mean, but I have precious metals, but I'm putting all my excess cash, and I have been most of the year, into bitcoins. And, because uh, I think that, man, I think that the, the it is so promising that, uh, and the fact that you can just pack up your bitcoins and fly to Bolivia if you wanted to. Well, bitcoins are outlawed in Bolivia, I think. But you could fly to Chile. <laughs> Everybody in Chile, I mean, a lot of people in Chile are, just can't wait to get their hands on Bitcoins. You could probably get a, a nice premium, if a nice vacation, too, if you wanted to go down there. But, uh, <clears throat> but basically, in times of bust, you stay away from precious metals because they're probably three times higher than normal. And... Uh, and in times of bust, if you have the resources, that's the time to pick up real estate. And if you want to do any stock market stuff, uh, that's the time to get into that too. Um, but during the booms, that's the time uh, to buy precious metals and uh, and and basically secure and and do do uh, safe savings. You know, like uh, like. Uh, of course, precious metals, and and if you have a house or a small house or something during a boom time, uh, that's probably a good time to sit right where you are, throttle your spending down to zero, like very low. Uh, keep work the overtime you can if you have the time to do it. Work graveyard if you uh, can make a few bucks an hour more, uh, and then. <clears throat> And then basically uh, put that money into paying off your mortgage, paying off your debts, and uh, buying precious metals. And then you'll be really stable. You'll be in a very stable 
difficult to uh, to screw out over position, uh, and then when the boom, when the bust cycle is at its low, you can like really watch and watch real estate values. Then you can do things like buying into the stock market or buying into real estate. So in bust, it's taken me probably 20, 30 years of uh, being in the investment <laughs> field, you know, or being in the investment uh, market, you know, uh, to fi finally figure out, you know, it's funny, you live a certain amount of time and you don't really figure it out until it's time to fucking die. <laughs> so, listen to the old man uh, if you're a young guy. Uh, uh, in times of bust, buy hard a good assets like real estate and and uh, some companies in the stock market. You can do that. Uh, in times of boom, stay away from real estate, stay away from the stock market, and uh, and pay off your debts and work all the overtime you can, and uh, then. When the next bust cycle runs uh, around, you will have the means and the financial stability to be to be relaxed when everybody else is panicking. Because if you are sitting on a big freaking pile of precious metals and everybody's freaking out, you know that you can uh, just if you lose your job or something, you can trot right down to the local coin shop, cash in some of those uh, precious uh, some of those silver rounds and and saunter to the grocery store and buy your groceries and, and you are going to be okay, right? Uh, and big toes, we don't have anybody looking out for us. Uh, if Some people, uh, like charities and governments and stuff, they might help, uh, they help women and children, but they don't help you. <laughs> so uh, it's important to have our finances straight. So in cycles of boom, uh, uh, stay away from real estate and stocks and cycle of bust stay away from precious metals and uh, uh, yeah stay away from precious metals so um, right now we are in a boom cycle at least as far as Wall Street is concerned work all that overtime you can throttle your spending back as much as you can and uh, put your money into things like precious metals and paying off debt. And then when the bottom falls out of Wall Street, uh, stocks crash and uh, everybody's freaking out and uh, the guy on Mad Money is telling you to sell all your stocks because the game's over. <laughs> that's the time to be buying stocks uh, if you want to do that sort of thing. And of course, that's also the time to buy real estate if you put yourself into a into a position to be able to do that. So, uh, I'm a little disjointed, sorry. I only woke up an hour ago or so. But uh, now, I guess that pretty much covers it. So, uh, <laughs> see ya.